Welcome back to the Jungets Games playthrough for Sierra West. At this point, we have taken a couple turns throughout the game, and if you are coming to this video without having seen the tutorial, then you can find a link for that down below in the description or the eye up in the top corner. Now, at this point, I would like to once again ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I very well might make mistakes in this extended playthrough, and I will put corrections on the screen if those happen. Now, I'd also like to ask again that if you enjoy this video, you please click the like button for it down below, and I think at this point, let's jump back into the game. Let's begin things off again, and the blue player now gets to take their turn. So the first thing they have to do is plan out their three cards. After considering their options, they've decided to plan just like this. And at the start of their pioneering step, we get to look over here and see that they have a beaver showing and a fox showing, and we can potentially trap one of those if we want to. Well, I figure we have one food over here, and currently we have not trapped the beaver or the fox, so let's go ahead and discard this. Uh, we do want to make sure that we use this green path pioneer to go over here and do the trapping. Uh, that way we can reserve this tan path pioneer to activate this on our next turn if we want to. I guess if we look at the cards in our hand, we don't actually have any stones, so I suppose that doesn't actually super matter for us. But either way, we can now trap one of these two. We can see the beaver would get us a wood, and the fox would get us a stone. Then we already have ways of making extra stones, so I figure let's flip this one over to the wood side, and we now have two of these animals flipped over. Okay, the blue player can now take their pioneering actions, and the first thing they're going to do is a cabin action with this green path pioneer. Now they have to go right down here, and as long as this is down here, once per pioneer step, they get a one resource discount when they do one of these. So now that this is here, they can pick up this pioneer that was over here on the tracker spot, and they can head onto this location. That's going to get them two stone, which they can add immediately into their area. And then they come here, and they're just going to use this discount right now. So they effectively don't have to pay anything, and they now have a shovel to play with. Now they've decided to get rid of this stone from their supply, and they can add that to the shovel, and that will allow them the ability to build this cabin. Now that means this brown cabin will be discarded, and then we can then shift these over. The next one to pop up here says that whenever you go onto a single boot location, that can act as a double boot location. So that's actually quite powerful. And then this one right here says that whenever you do one of the shovel actions, you actually get a gold as a benefit. So they're going to add this right over here. And now they've decided to move this Pioneer onto that location. That's going to get them two wood, which they can add right into their supply. And now it's time to set off with their Green Path Pioneer. The first thing it's going to do is get a boot for them, which they will use to go up here on the mountain with their frontiersmen. Next up, they're going to travel to this location, which is going to get them one wood, and then they will go here, which gets them two more boots. And with these, they can go one, two, because for every boot movement, you can just go to an adjacent card. And then they're going to move their tan pioneer over here and do their second shovel action of the round. Now over here, this is going to cost them two resources, and they've decided they're going to get rid of this food and this wood right here. And with this shovel, they're going to pick up this card. So they, of course, bring their frontiersmen down to the bottom of the mountain, and they can then add this either on top of their deck or into their discard pile. And they've decided to go with the top of their deck. After this, we can see that we have a new card that is face down and has no cards on top of it. So we can flip this over, and it's another orchard card. We knew that because it had this red apple on the back, so we can add that right over here. And then we have yet another card to reveal. This one says you can spend three red apples to go up once on the red track right over there. It also has the ability to activate your wagons to get a bunch of these apples. And the center action just gets you one of these two boot tokens. At this point, the tan pioneer for the blue player is all the way over here on the right, and they're now going to move their green path pioneer to this spot to get them another boot. And with this, they can go right on top of this newly revealed card. Next up, this green path pioneer is going to go there, which is going to get the blue player a food, and at this point, they can do summit actions. Now, they only have four resources total, and they have decided they're going to send one of them right up here. That's going to cost two wood and one of their food, and that will give them one bump up on the wooden brown scoring track. We can see that's right over here, and as a bonus, the blue player will get a double boot token. And now if we want to, we can do an out-of-turn tracking action in order to pick up a wood. Now if we did that, we would then not have this Pioneer available to activate down here and get us extra stone. But if we look at the three cards we drew, there is no stone on the green path, so we would not really have a decent thing for this Pioneer to do anyway. So I figure let's go ahead and track. So we can go right over here, and that's going to add one wood into our supply with this off-turn action. Okay, at this point, the blue player is out of things to do. They can't afford either of these summit actions, so at this point, they're going to pass. They can bring all of their pioneers back. They can then discard these cards, and then they will draw the top three cards from their deck. 
All right, it's time for us to take our next turn so we can start by planning out our cards. And when we look at the cards we have in our hand, well, the bonuses up along the top are uh, one bump on the green track. And if we go up on that green track, not only will it be worth points to us at the end of the game, but we will get a fur trading action. And every time we do a fur trading action, we will get a food and a wood at this point. So obviously, I think we do want to make that happen. And in order to get enough of these green apples, we need to bump up one more on this wagon trail. Now, that's going to cost us a boot as well as two resources, so there is quite a bit going on that we want to try and stack up to uh, make all this stuff happen on our turn. In addition to all of that, we could potentially use a shovel to pick up one of those cabins that we like, so I figure let's maybe go ahead and start by putting this right over here, and then we could slide these in like this. That's going to give us the ability to have the boots that we need. We can also spend, well, I guess one, two, three resources to make both of these paid actions happen, but I think this is going to be worth it. Now that we're starting off our pioneer step, it looks like the blue player decides they want to do an off-turn action, and they're going to trap the bunny. It looks like they've decided to do this with their tan track pioneer. That is going to cost them one resource, but they can now flip their bunny over, and they've just saved themselves from a three-point penalty at the end of the game. We can now start taking our pioneer actions, and we are obviously not going to be activating a cabin because both of our pioneers are already occupied with the tracking and trapping actions. So I think the first thing that we should do is probably send this green track pioneer up here. That will get us one boot. And with this, I figure let's head onto this card. Now, I don't believe as part of our plan we're going to be buying this card in this round, but it's likely the blue player will buy it on their next turn, and if we are on this card when it gets bought, then we will fall down to the bottom of the mountain, and as a bonus, we will get one of these double boot uh, bonuses. So I figure it makes sense to spend one boot over there to get that token. And then we can start moving our tan path pioneer, and that's going to get us two food. So we can add that right into our area. And then after this, I figure let's get another wood. So we can add that into our area. And then I think let's go ahead and move the tan path pioneer onto the shovel. Now we do have to spend one of the basic resources to activate the shovel. And then let's spend another one of our wood to pick up this cabin right here. I really like the idea of using this in order to have one of our pioneers activate multiple green cabins. So we can add this right over here, and of course, in order to get the benefit of this, we do have to buy another cabin, but I figure we're pretty incentivized to do that now, so that just one pioneer can not only get us bonus stone, but also whatever this bonus may be that we pick up in the future. After taking that cabin, we of course have to discard this rightmost tile because it was not taken, and then we can slide these over and see some new tiles. This one right here says that whenever you go through the bear hazard, you actually get the boots and you don't have to pay for that hazard. So not only do you get through it for free, but you get a boot token. So that's certainly nice. And then this one right here says that uh, whenever you get on one of those double boot spots, instead of actually moving twice, you can take a gold. Well, I have to say that I wish we had this cabin right now because I don't think we have a good use for this double boot. We're going to use a single boot right here in order to move our wagon, but we already know that we've put our Frontiersman on the same location as the blue player to try and get a bonus double boot token when that card gets purchased, and there just didn't seem to be a great way to use these other boots. So I figure let's just go onto this spot and use those two boots in order to go up on the wagon track. And as you can see, we only need one of those boots. Now, we could use the other boot to move up this mountain more, but again, I think I like the idea of just hanging out here to try and get that bonus when this card gets bought. I suppose if the blue player does not buy this, then we could next turn try to buy this card as well. So either way, when we go to the spot, we do have to spend two resources, and we have exactly two resources in our area, so we can discard those. And now we are over two of these orchard cards. Unfortunately, our endgame tracker modifier is still at 1. We have to go up two more steps before that will actually get up to a better spot, but once we get to here, it goes to 3 and 4 right away, although that is a lot of boots in order to get those last steps. Alright, let's keep moving on, and the green pioneer will get us one food, which we can add to our area, and now let's use our mule down here in our gray cabin. That lets us turn this gold right here into a regular basic resource. And I figure let's just take a food with this. And now we can move this tan pioneer over here. Now I don't think there's actually a good spot for us to use this boot right here. So let's just keep moving along this track. I suppose this green pioneer can go all the way to the end, no problem. And then when we get to this spot, we can spend both of these basic resources to activate it. And this will generate apples equal to where our wagon is, and then every orchard to the left. We can see that we are currently right here, so that's going to be one, two, three, four green apples and one red apple made. And we can track this on the apple resource board. 
The next thing we can do is move one of these pioneers or this mule up to this spot. So I figure the green path will go up there and we can spend three green apples to go up once on the green apple track. Currently there are four green apples, so we can spend three of those, and then we will go up once on the green track, and you'll notice as a bonus, we now get to do a fur trading action, and you'll notice that down below there is no out of turn bonus, so the blue player cannot get any bonuses for trying to follow on with a tracking action when it comes to these apple tracks. So let's come down here and do our fur trading action as a bonus from that green track, and that's going to get us one food and one wood, which we can add right back into our area. And then at this point, I think we are done. We're just one resource away from being able to do another one of those track bumps, which is a bit of a bummer, but I felt like it was necessary to try and go up these tracks and really move that cart along. So uh, these are the decisions we're going to commit to, even though we wasted a couple boots, I suppose. And at this point, we can now pass. So we can reset all of these in our area. We'll discard these cards, and you'll notice that we have just one card left. So we can put that into our area, and now we are going to shuffle up the discard pile that we have here, and then continue drawing so that we have three cards in our hand. In this case, it looks like we're going to get these two cards here. Oh, that's interesting. They both have the apples on them. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to fuel those, but I suppose it's possible. There's currently one green apple and two red apples in the market, and I'm not sure if the blue player is going to be able to use those on their next turn. So the blue player can start things off, and they've decided to plan their cards just like this. So we can see here, there's only one animal face up, and it's a fox. So we have the option of trying to trap that fox out of turn. And I think we should definitely do that. So we'll go right over here and let's get rid of this food resource. And we can now flip the fox over. And now every time when we do a fur tracking action, we get a food, a wood, and a stone. So that's all three of the basic resources. So the blue player can now take their pioneer actions. The first one is going to take this green path pioneer and send them down here to this brown bonus cabin. That gets them one discount when it comes to a payment once this turn. And they're going to start working towards that. So they can now take their tan brown path uh, pioneer here. They're going to go onto this spot, which is going to get them two stones. And then they can go right here and not pay this uh, resource penalty because they have this cabin activated down here. Now that means they get one shovel action. And with this, they have decided to indeed pick up this card. So that's going to bring them down to the bottom. And then we will go down to the bottom. And since we got kicked out, we will get one of these double boot bonuses, which is nice. And then the green player can add this card into their deck. And they've decided to put it on top of their deck instead of putting it into their discard pile. At this point, they're now going to start working along their green path. The first thing they will get is one boot. And they've decided to use that to start walking back up the mountain. And then they're going to keep working down their green path, so this is going to get them one food, and this location will pull the mule back into their area from our zone. So that's now something they have available to them, and they will then go here to get a wood, and that's going to finish out the green path. So they're now going to switch gears over to the brown path and go onto this spot, which gets them one boot, and they're going to use that one to keep walking up the mountain. Now they're going to keep moving down the brown path, and this location allows them to harvest apples from the orchards. And that is going to cost them two resources, and they've decided to get rid of these two stone to do that. And then when we come over to their wagon, we can see that's only going to create two green apples. Now all they wanted was one green apple, so they decided it did not make sense to make more apples that they were not going to use, because that would potentially give us those apples to use. So they're going to make these two green apples right here. And then they're going to activate this summit action to spend two green apples and two red apples to go up once on either the red or green track. So they can spend all of those apples, and there's just one green apple left. And they've decided to go up once on the red apple track. Now as a bonus, that's going to get them two gold, which they can put into their supply. And then after they do that, they're going to activate their mule onto this gray house, and they're going to get rid of one of their gold and turn that into a stone. And after doing that, they can send this mule up here, or I guess they could also send this pioneer, and they can spend one of each of the three basic resources in order to go up once on a standard track of their choice. In this case, it looks like they want to go up on the stone track, so that's going to get them one of these gold resources, and then we have the option of tracking them to get a stone. Now, in order to figure out if that's going to be worth it to us, we need to look at our hand. We can see that this pioneer would be able to activate down here and get us extra stone, and we don't actually have any stone in the green path area. So, uh, once again, I think this does make sense. We'll go down here and track. The bonus associated with the track the blue player went up is going to be a stone. And then we can come back over here, and it looks like the blue player is done with their pioneer actions. This means they can now pass, so they can reset all of their pioneers, uh, and then they can bring their cards into their discard pile. Uh, they have two cards currently in their draw pile, so they now have to shuffle up their deck and draw another one. 
All right, it's once again time for us to go, and the first thing we have to do is plan. Now, there are some pretty good things in our hand. The first thing that really jumps out to me is the fact that we can spend three of any type of apple to get gold. And then over here, we can spend three green apples to go up on that green apple track, which will get us bonus fur trading actions, which will get us one of each of the basic resources. So I think we definitely want to try and make that happen. And in fact, if we look down here, the green path action for this card allows you to, as a mandatory action, create two more red and two more green apples. Now, that is enough to create at least one gold. I suppose it's possible that could be a second gold if there were uh, just two more as a remainder. So I think this is definitely the card we want to be in the middle so that we can activate that spot right here. Now when it comes to these two, I figure maybe we should put this over here. That's going to give us the ability to do a fur trading action, and we put this bear hazard as far to the right as possible, and I think we just won't finish out that track, and that leaves us the option of going over here to generate a lot of apples with this action, and that's only going to cost us one resource. So I think that's a pretty good plan right here. And at this point, our opponent could potentially try to trap this bear right here. But at the moment, it looks like they just have gold and no basic resources, so they cannot actually afford to do that. This means we could just go right into our pioneering phase. And of course, we are not going to be activating our cabins because both of our pioneers are already activated. Now we can take this green track one and head over here, and that's going to get us a food. And then the next thing I think we should do is just keep going down that green track and generate two red apples and two green apples. This means there are now three green apples and two red apples available. And I don't think that's enough. So let's start working down this tan path. And the first thing we will do is get one boot. And with this, let's start working back up the mountain with our frontiersmen. After this, we can come back to the tracks, and I've just realized that, well, I said before that maybe we just won't be going across this bear hazard, but now I know that we actually want to activate multiple of these summit actions, and we need the pioneers to do that. So unfortunately, we might actually be spending these resources. I'm not really sure how it's all going to shake out, but for now, I think we do want to go over here, and we can spend this one food in order to make some apples. When we come out to our wagon, we can see that we're going to generate one red apple, which means there's now three, and then four green apples. Now, currently, there are three green apples, which means we're only going to generate three of them. We have capped out at six here. Now that the apple orchard action is done, let's keep going to the right on this tan path, and that's going to activate a fur action. Now, we can see over here we're going to make a food, a wood, and a stone, so that's a very lucrative spot for us. And then let's take another boot. With this, I figure let's head right up the mountain, and we could go to the same spot as the blue player here. And then the next thing we can do is go onto this spot, and that's going to make one gold, which we can add into our area. And now that this pioneer is out, I think let's send them over here to this summit action. This gives us the option of spending a food, a stone, and a wood, and that lets us go up on any standard track of our choice. And this is important because we can now go up here on this food track, and that will allow us the ability to steal this mule back to try and get all three of our summit actions activated this round. Now before we move on, the blue player does have the option of taking a food with the tracker off turn action. And they've decided after looking at their cards that they are going to do that, and they will use their green pioneer. So they can take a food and put that into their supply. And then we can come back to our board. Now at this point, I think we have some pretty cool stuff to do still. We can move our Pioneer right over here. And of course, we do have to spend two resources or take a damage. And I don't think we want to lose a cabin or one of our wagon tracks. So we can get rid of both of these resources in order to pay for that. And that allows us the option of using this person to go right over here. We can see that Summit Action allows us to spend three green apples to go up once on the green track. And currently there are six green apples, so we can easily spend those, and then when we go up on this track, we get another fur trading action. This is the second of these that we get to do this round, and just like before, that's going to be a food, a wood, as well as a stone. At this point, things are looking pretty good, but let's make them even better and now use this mule that we picked up with this track bump earlier, and we can go right to the summit. We can now spend three apples of any color of our choice to get one gold as many times as we want. And it looks like there are currently three green apples and three red apples. So we can get rid of all six of those apples, which means we can add two gold into our supply. And I think we are now done with our turn, but I have no complaints. We did a lot there. In fact, the blue player is starting to get a little bit nervous about how well we are able to really pull together this fur trading engine. So either way, we are now going to pass so we can bring all of this stuff back. And then we can discard these three cards and then draw three more cards from the top of our deck. Okay, it's time for Blue to take their turn, and for their planning phase, they're going to put their three cards just like this. 
Next up, they're going to take their Tan Path Pioneer and send them down here to a cabin. Now, they've decided to go to this cabin right here, which isn't too surprising. They have two of these food symbols showing up on here on the Green Path, and now they're going to take their Green Path Pioneer and start working down that path. The first step gives them one boot, and they're going to use that to go up one space on the mountain with their Frontiersmen. Next up, they will get one food. However, this cabin says whenever they get one food on the green path, they get two food instead. So they can take that two food and add it into their supply. Moving on, they will get one boot token, which they can add to their supply. And then once again, they will get one plus one or two more food. At this point, they figure they may as well keep moving along with their green path pioneer. So they can go to this spot, and that's going to get them one wood. And they have now reached the end of that green path. Their Tan Path Pioneer is now done being at this cabin, so they can start working down the path, and they will pick up two stone at this location. Next up, they've decided they want to spend their double boot token to immediately use those two boots, and with these two boots, they will go up twice on the mountain. Next up, they're going to go over to this shovel, and they will spend one of their numerous food in order to activate that payment, and now with this shovel... They're going to go ahead and buy this card. So again, the summit ability for this one says you can spend all of the red apples if you want and turn those into food at a rate of one to one. Down here, there's also a mandatory action of generating three red apples. And this is a mandatory action on the green path as well for one green and one red apple. So the blue player will take this card and then their frontiersman will fall to the bottom of the mountain. And then we can reveal this card. It's another orchard and it has just a single green apple on it. So we can add this right here, and there are just two more cards left available out here on the mountain, and once both of those come down here, we will initiate the endgame. Now at this point, we have a couple cards that need to get flipped. This one right here is another ability to spend two green and two red apples to go up on either one of those tracks. It also has a mule down here as an option, and then we also have to reveal this card here. Uh, this one allows you to turn green apples into food. It generates some mandatory green apples, and then it also has this generate one green and one red apple up here on the top. So the blue player can now add this onto the top of their deck or their discard pile, and they're going to go with the top of their deck, and they can then move on with their Tan Path Pioneer. On this location, they will generate a stone, and then once they get over here, they've decided it does not make sense for them to actually activate this and generate apples. They would just make two apples at the moment, and they don't have any extra boots to try and move themselves down that wagon path. So they're not going to spend these resources, they'll just go over here to the end, and then they're going to send this Pioneer over to that spot. Now that's going to cost them two of their stone and one of their food, and it will bump them up once on the gray scoring path. And we can see that that's going to generate one gold for them. And now we could do an off-turn action to get the stone, but I figure let's not worry about that right now. But then I just realized that as the yellow player, we forgot to try and uh, hunt one of these animals that popped up at the beginning of the uh, blue player's pioneering phase. Now, we definitely would have done that. It just slipped my mind for a little bit there. So let's go ahead and take care of that right now. We can see there is a fox and this one deer over here. And we've already hunted the fox, but we have not hunted a deer yet. So let's go ahead and flip that over and send this pioneer down here for that uh, trapping action. Uh, sorry about that. We do have to spend one resource, of course. And I figure we'll get rid of this stone. And now we can go back to the blue player's turn. Well, unfortunately, they don't have anything else to do. Uh, they can't do either of these summit actions because currently there are no apples and they decided not to make apples. Again, this would have just generated two apples and they needed at least three to get one gold from here. So uh, this is the turn they decided to go with. They have a lot of resources left over, so they have set themselves up well for some good turns in the future. And at this point, they can go ahead and pass, which means they can reset all of these and then discard their cards and then finally draw three more cards from the top of their deck. All right, this means we can now take our next turn, and we have to start with planning. Now, if we look out here, the first thing that jumps out to me is this one fur action. I think at this point, with four out of our five animals flipped over, we really want to make a priority of using these fur actions. And I figure it probably makes sense to always put that over here on the right, or not always, but um, to often put it over here, because that is going to put this hazard on the far right spot. And maybe we could just stop this tan pioneer right here and not worry about going through that spot there. Now that leaves these two left, and we know that we could use this Pioneer to activate all of our green cabins with this cabin here. And if we take a single stone, we'll get another stone, and this one does have a single stone on it. So I think that makes sense for us to try and evaluate it, which means this is the card that has to go right here in the back, and I think that is a pretty good looking turn. We have this shovel associated with just the single resource cost, and I don't think we're going to be able to do all three of these up here. So either way, I think let's go ahead and run with this. But before we actually take our pioneering actions, I've remembered this time, the blue player does want to try and trap one of these two animals. There's a bear and a beaver showing. 
and they've decided they're going to use their tanned path pioneer to go over here. They're going to spend one food for the cost, and they've decided to flip over the bear. The reward for that is a gold when you do a fur trading action, so that's pretty good. Next up, we can come back here and start doing our pioneer actions. And the first thing I think we should do is send our tan path pioneer down here. Now that's going to activate all of our green cabins with this effect. So now the green path pioneer will generate two stone instead of one when they get to those spots. So speaking of that, we can now send the green path pioneer up here. The first thing they will do is get us one boot. And it's worth noting that we are going to get three more boots this round. Now I figure we will use one boot to go right here. We can use the two boot that we'll be hitting soon to try and continue down this track right there. And then we could use the next one to try and get up here and then use the shovel action to take our second new card of the game. But I suppose I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's keep moving down this green path and that's going to get us one plus one or two stone. So we can add that into our supply. And now I figure, yeah, let's go for it. Uh, we can put this person right over here to get two boots. And that is going to be enough to move our wagon up here to the next slot, although we also have to spend three basic resources, and I figure we'll get rid of a stone, a food, and a wood for this. We are now just one jump away from increasing our track modifier. Uh, we've been working really hard for that, and whenever we generate apples, we are going to make, it looks like, eight apples total. Next up, I think it's time to move down this tan path. We can go on to this location, and that's going to get us two wood. We can add those directly into our supply now, and the next thing we need to do is move our green path to get one more boot. This is going to let us go right up here at the top of the mountain. And then we can keep moving down this tan path to this spot. Then we can unlock that shovel if we get rid of one resource. And I figure let's get rid of this wood right here. And then we could use that shovel in order to pick up this card. So we will now fall to the bottom of the mountain and we can reveal two new cards. This one lets you go up the red track for three red apples. And this one lets you go up the green track for three green apples. The next thing we can do is add this either to our discard pile or the top of our deck. And I think I like the idea of putting this on our deck. Uh, that ensures that we will have the ability to make a lot of apples, and we will be able to use four of those apples anyway to go up one of those tracks. Again, the uh, green track lets us do a fur trading action, which is really powerful for us. In fact, we actually make apples when we do those fur trade actions now that we flipped over this deer. So speaking of that, I figure let's move down the tan track. And then we can do another fur trade action. Now that's going to get us a wood, a stone, as well as a food. And then we have the option of getting one green and one red apple. Now you see it has a white border around it, and that means it's not mandatory. And I think we actually don't want to take it. We don't have the ability to use those on this turn, and it's possible that the blue player would be able to use those on their turn. So let's just not worry about taking those apples for now. And instead, let's keep moving down this track. Now, on this green track, we are going to get one gold. We can add that into our supply, and then this pioneer is to the end. Now, at this point, I'm not sure if we want to bring this pioneer over to the end, so let's see how things go with these two uh, workers here to do these summit actions. Now, the first summit action I think we should do is this one. That lets us spend two of our gold, and we can immediately move our wagon one space forward. We don't have to have boots or any of the other resources to do this, which means we are officially in the 2x modifier spot. When we come back to our area, I think the last thing we can realistically do is use our mule to do one of these two other summit actions. If we use this mule to try and generate some resources from this gold, I don't think we would still have enough to actually pay off the bear to pull this pioneer over and be able to do that third summit action. So let's go ahead and just send this right over here. That's going to cost us two of our stone and one of our food, and we can then go up once on the gray scoring track. And this means we will get one gold as a bonus. And then the blue player decides they are going to track on us, and that's going to get them one stone. But of course, they do have to use one of their pioneers. So they can send this right over here, and if you'll note, they could have used this pioneer down here to get a one discount on one of these penalties, but they could also use this stone to pay for that. It looks like the best way to leverage this is potentially to try and send one of them over here to get an extra resource, and then one to go down here to get that discount to kind of double up on getting those, but they were so far behind when it came to flipping over these animals, they decided this probably made the most sense to do for this turn. All right, we are now done with our turn, so we can go ahead and reset all of our stuff. We can discard these three cards here, and then we can draw three more cards from the top of our deck. All right, it's now time for the blue player's turn, and they're going to start by planning, and it looks like this is what they want to do with their three cards. Next up, before they pioneer, we have the chance to try and trap one of these animals. There's a bunny and a bear showing. And it looks like the bear is the last one that we haven't trapped yet. So let's go ahead and send this green track pioneer down here. We can flip this over and we'll spend a wood, I think, to pay for that. And now we have all five of our animals trapped. So for the rest of the game, we're not actually going to do this action anymore. And we are somewhat motivated to try and finally get one of these brown uh, cabins so that we can actually make better use out of our pioneers here. 
Let's now come back to the blue player for their pioneering step, and they're going to start by moving along the tan path. That's going to get them two food that they can add right into their supply. And then after that, they're going to move on the green path to get a boot. With this, they've decided to go forward once with their wagon, and they do have to spend two resources for this payment. And then after that, they can go right here to get one wood. And then on this location, they are forced to generate three red apples. Currently, there aren't any apples in the supply, so now there are three red total. And then the next thing they're going to do is generate one more boot. With this, they're going to move their frontiersmen onto this location on the mountain. And then they're going to keep moving down this green path, and that's going to get them one gold, and that brings them all the way to the end of this path. And now they've decided to use this uh, pioneer to go over there. Now that's going to cost them two of their food and one wood, and they will then go up once on the food scoring track. And when that happens, we can see they then get to take the mule away from us, and we now have the option of following along to get a food. But in order to do that, we'd have to use our Tan Path Pioneer. So let's take a quick look at our new cards here. And it looks like one of them has a stone, and we could use this to generate one more stone. So realistically, the question is, do we want a food or a stone more at this moment? And I figure if we go ahead and do this right now and take that food, at least we are not locked into needing to reserve one of our uh, Pioneers down here while somebody else walks down the path. So let's go right over here, and that's going to generate one food from the track that the blue player just went up. And then we can come back to the blue player here, and they are going to spend one of their stone to activate this shovel. And with this, they're simply going to take the cheapest cabin from the track. Now after they do that, we can refill this, and the next one here... Oh, okay, this one allows you the ability to spend one boot token, and you actually then move your green path pioneer down to the tan path, and then they follow that tan path for the rest of the round. So that's pretty powerful. It lets you do the tan path multiple times, but of course, you forego the rest of the green path actions when you do that. So we can come back to the blue player's area, and when they put this cabin down here, they have now covered up all of their penalties for their cabin. So there's no more cabin building for them for the rest of the game. Uh, that's pretty good for them, although they do have three penalties over here with their animals still. Speaking of them, I think let's move the blue player down the tan path, and that gives them a fur trading action. This is going to generate one food and one gold for them. And then after this, they're going to take their mule and go up here to do a summit action. Now they can spend as many red apples as they want to get one food for each. And there are currently three red apples, so that means they get three food, which they can then add over here into their area. And then after that, they can move this tan path pioneer onto this bear hazard. They are going to go ahead and spend two food to overcome it. And then they can bring this pioneer up here to do a third summon action. And that's going to cost them two of their gold, which is two points. But they can then move their wagon one space farther on the track. Unfortunately for them, they're still at the 1x scoring spot, but they figured that was still worth it to cover three resources and two boots with those two gold, and they're now just one step away from increasing their multiplier by quite a bit. Okay, it looks like the blue player is now done with all of their actions, so they can go ahead and reset all of these things. They will discard their cards right here and then draw three more from the top of their deck. It has now come back over to us, but I just realized we made a small mistake on our last turn. Now, this action right over here with the deer is mandatory, so we should have generated one green and one red apple when we did that last fur trading action on our last turn. And this means there should have been one green and one red apple available to the blue player on their turn. That means they actually would have had one more red apple total, and they would have spent that to turn that into an extra food. So I'm going to put this over into the blue player's area, so we have now corrected everything, and there's currently one green apple out here on the market. Alright, let's now go ahead and deal with the planning phase for our turn, and these are the three cards we have. This one allows us to spend apples in order to go up one of those two tracks, and again, if we keep going up that green track, we keep doing fur uh, trading actions, which gets us all of these things over here. Now, we don't necessarily want to make more apples, but getting the rest of the stuff is quite good still. Uh, the reason we don't really want to make more apples, I think this round, has to do with the fact that we need two green and two red to activate this, and that's kind of it. We don't have any other ways to liquidate a bunch of apples, and making too many apples is a bit of a problem because, well, the blue player could use those to get some benefits. Now, if we look at the cards that we have in our hand, there are just two animals showing. There's a beaver here and a rabbit, and at this point, I think we want to try and starve the blue player out and not give them any easy options to trap animals. And when we look over here, we can see they've already trapped a bear and a bunny, and we have this bunny and beaver showing. 
So we don't want to give them the option of trapping a beaver. We don't really care if the bunny is showing because they cannot trap it again. So the only way to block this is to put this right in the middle so that that beaver will be covered up by either one of these two cards. Now after that, I think, let's go ahead and put the cards like this. I like the idea of having a cheap shovel right here, and it's possible that we might actually end up spending resources to generate some apples. I'm not sure if that's actually going to make the most sense for us at the moment, but I think this is the plan that we want to go with. So obviously at this point, we're showing just a bunny rabbit, and the blue player cannot trap it because it's already been trapped, so they don't get a uh, off-turn action, and we kind of force that to happen on them. So let's now start our pioneering step. Now, the first thing I think we should do is just go down this tan path, and that's going to generate two food. We can add a right into our supply. And then after we do that, I figure let's go over here and get one boot. Looking ahead, there is a double boot here and a single boot left over that we're going to be getting throughout this round. And we do also have one of these double boot tokens. Now, I think we're probably going to want to go up once right here with this boot right now. And then we can use our double boot to go up here and then potentially use a shovel to get our third card of the game. Uh, the third card is worth three points, so that seems like a pretty good deal. And then we could use our double boot action potentially to try and increase our wagon modifier. Now, I think at this point, let's go ahead and move on. And the next thing that makes sense is to move our green path pioneer onto this spot. That's going to get us one stone. And then we will get our double boots. And with these, I figure let's go one, two. And that puts us on the spot where we could potentially buy the card to go up farther on that green track, which gives us those massively beneficial fur trading actions. Moving on, let's now take one food from the supply. And then this pioneer is all the way to the end. And I figure the next thing we could do is move this tan path over there. Now let's spend one of our numerous food to pay for this cost, and then we can see that we get to do one shovel action. And with this, we can buy our third card of the game. When we take this, we don't actually reveal any new cards out here on the mountain. And then I think let's add this on top of our deck. And now let's keep taking actions, and the next thing I think we should do is gain one boot. With this, let's head right back onto the mountain. And now it's time for us to figure out if we actually want to harvest apples or not. Now, looking out to where our wagon is, it's right over here, we would generate one, two, three, four, five, six apples, so that would cap that out, and then we would also make three red apples. After doing that, we would use two green and two red, so I suppose if we did all this, we would end up leaving, it looks like, four green and one red left over. However, if we decided to go up on the green track with this, then we would do a fur trading, and that would make another green and red, so there would just be lots of apples available to our opponent. Now, at the same time, if we did all this, then we would effectively be spending one food because we'd make uh, spend two food here and then get one food back over there and then we would also get an extra point from this gold and all of these other resources that we could potentially use to keep moving our uh, wagon along now i think it probably doesn't make sense to go too into the weeds on trying to block our opponent let's just go for it let's spend these two food right here Oh wait, actually, let's spend one food and one stone. Yeah, if we look up here, we actually want two food in our supply at the moment uh, to be able to go over here and get a mule to do all three of these summit actions. Either way, we just have to spend any two resources, so I think a stone and a food makes a little more sense. And then we're going to make six green apples, and actually we only made five because there's already one right there, and then we will make three red apples. Moving on, let's now send this pioneer up to this spot. We can spend two green and two red apples to go up on one of the apple tracks. So we can reduce the supply by two for each. And then I think let's keep going up this green track. And that's going to get us one fur trading action. And that's going to activate all of our trapped animals. So we're going to get one stone. We are going to get a wood. We will also get another food. And then we will get a gold. And we must make another green and red apple. This means we are going to leave five green apples and one red apple out there in the communal supply, which isn't great. But we do now have exactly the resources we need to go up both of these tracks right here. So let's go ahead and start with this one. We can send this pioneer here. We will spend one stone and then two food. And that will bring us up once on the red food track. And this is important because that lets us pull the mule back from our opponent and we can then do a third summon action with it. After we go up that track, the blue player can do an off turn action to take up food, but they've decided not to. So it's come back to us, and I figure let's send this mule right up to the top. We can then spend our two wood and one food, and that will let us go up once on the brown wood track. This is the first time we've done this one all game long, and that is going to get us another one of these double boot tokens. And again, the blue player can follow along with an off-turn action and take a wood, and they've decided to do that using their green path pioneer. At this point, I think we're done with our actions. We've successfully liquidated all of our resources. And we've got a couple boot tokens and four gold remaining, which is pretty nice. So we can go ahead and pass, and that's going to reset all of these things. We can discard our cards right here, and it looks like we have exactly three cards on the top of our deck for the next turn. 
So it's time for Blue to go, and for their planning phase, they're going to put their cards just like this. And then for their Pioneer action, they're going to start off by sending their Tanpath Pioneer right down here. And this means every time they get one boot, they get two boots. And if there had actually been a double boot out here, that double boot would have been worth four boots. But that is not the case, it looks like. So now that they've gone down here, they can start working down their green path. And the first thing they will do is get one boot, but that is actually going to be two boots. And they're going to use those two along with one of each resource to go up once more on the track with their wagon. So they've now tied up with us. The next thing they're going to do is generate one stone with their Green Path Pioneer, and then they're going to take this uh, Pioneer right to this location, and that's going to get them one of these double boot tokens. Moving on, they will go to this spot, which gets them one boot, but since they have left their Tan Path Pioneer down here on this cabin, they will once again get that bonus, which means this is going to be two boots for them. And with these, they've decided to move their Frontiersmen up two spaces on the mountain. Next up, they're going to keep moving down this green path, it looks like, and that's going to make one stone for them. And they have now found themselves at the end of this path, and they are going to now take their tan path pioneer, have them leave the cabin, and then go to this location. Now that's going to get them to wood, which they can add into their supply. And now they've moved on to this spot, and that gets them one shovel, as long as they discard one of their resources. It looks like they have more wood than they think they need, so they're going to get rid of this one right here. And with this, they are now going to take this card. So they will fall back down to the bottom of the mountain. They can now put this into their area, and they've decided to put it on top of their deck. And now we can reveal some new cards. The first one will be an orchard card. It's the second to last one. And this one generates two red apples, so we can put that right over here. And then, of course, we flip over this card here, which gives the option of going up on either one of the apple tracks. And it also has the ability to make some gold with that middle green option. So let's now come back to the blue player's board, and the next thing they want to do is generate two food. They can add those into their area, and now they are going to use this boot token. That's going to give them two boots immediately. And with these, they're going to go up twice on the mountain with their frontiersmen. Next up, they're going to move right over here, and they're going to activate this shovel by getting rid of two of their food. With this, they actually get to buy another card, so that's their second card they picked up this round, and this is actually their fifth card, which means it's worth five points, and every future card they take for the rest of the game is going to be worth five points for them. So they're going to add this one on top of their deck, and then we can reveal these two cards. This one lets you turn green apples into stone at a rate of one to one, and this one lets you go up on the green track, and it has a middle green path bonus of giving you a double boot token. At this point, Blue has both of their Pioneers all the way to the end, and they're now going to send this one over to the spot. That will need them to spend one stone and then two of their food, and they can then go up once on the food scoring track. And this is important because they can now take the meal token away from us and then use it to do all three of their summit actions this round. After they went up this track, we do have the option of doing an off-turn action to get one food. And when you consider the fact that we don't actually have a cabin for our Green Path Pioneer to go on, let's go ahead and do that. So we will track, and that's going to get us one food into our supply. And then over here, the blue player is now going to activate this. That's going to cost them a stone and two wood, so they had the perfect amount of resources for this. And that allows them to go up once on the brown scoring track. This means they're going to get a double boot token as a bonus. And then the final action they're going to do is their third summit action, and that's going to cost two green and two red apples to go up at once on either of the tracks. Currently there are two red apples, so they can go down to zero, and now there are just three green apples left over, and they've decided they want to keep going up on this red track. That's going to get them two gold as a bonus, and if they had done this one with the fur trading, they would have gotten one gold and a food. So they decided they'd rather have the extra gold, because the resources are not worth anything at the end of the game, and every gold is worth a point. When they now come back to their area, they've decided to pass. They have no more actions to do, but that was a very good round for them. They went up once on the wagon track, they went up three times on the scoring tracks, and they picked up two cards, so a very strong turn for the blue player. When they pass, they can reset all of these things and discard these cards, and of course they will draw the top three cards from the deck, and two of these they actually added on top of their deck in this turn. At this point, we can now take our next turn, and when we look at the cards in our hand, we knew we had this one because we picked that one up, and then these were the last two in our deck. Now, at the moment, there are zero red apples, but there are three green apples, and this requires three green apples to go up once on that track. Now, that means we don't really need to generate more apples in order to get the most benefit that we can, so I figure let's put this in the middle so we can cover up this apple generating spot. Now with that in mind, we can now put these either like that, or we can put them like this one right here, and I don't think it super matters for us in this current moment, so let's go ahead and slide these over. At this point, we have now finished planning, but before we take our pioneer actions, we are showing a bunny and a fox. 
which means the blue player could potentially trap the fox. However, they don't have any resources. They did not plan ahead very well. They got excited, I think, with their turn. And they should have used this mule to turn at least one of these golds into one of those general resources. But that is something they forgot to do. So unfortunately, they're going to have to live with their mistake and not be able to do this trapping action. So let's come back over here, and the first thing to look at is the cabin situation. Now we picked up at this cabin a long time ago with the anticipation of getting another one of these to have a really efficient turn, but we've not really gotten back around to getting another cabin, and I just realized there's actually a stone hiding right under here. So we would have been able to get an extra stone if we had put this over on one of the sides, but I like the idea of having these two shovels available. I think potentially we'll be able to use that a little bit better. So let's stick with the plan that we have, and let's go ahead and start by moving this Tanpath Pioneer onto that location, and that's going to get us two food. And then the next thing we should do is move down the green path, I think, and that's going to get us one boot. With this, I figure let's go once over here to the left, and then I think let's run down this green path a little bit. We can go right here to get us one wood, and then right here to get us a gold. And then I think let's go right over here and then spend one of our food in order to do a shovel action. Uh, that way we can buy a card and then we can use this boot action to once again move up the hill to try and set ourselves up to get more cards. So that means we can pick up this card and then we will go down to the bottom of the hill with our Frontiersman. And then I figure we'll add this on top of our deck so we have a decent way to continue going up that green apple track on our next turn. Moving on, we can keep going down this tan path and this next spot is going to get us two stone. And then we can go down the green path to get one more boot. With this, I figure let's go on to this card right over there. And then the next thing we can do is move down the green path to get another wood. We are now at a place where we can send this pioneer up, and I think let's go up here and spend three of the green apples to go up once on that green apple track. So that's going to zero out the green apples, and then we will once again get a fur trading action as a bonus. And that's going to get us one of each of the three basic resources, as well as a gold, and we have to put another green and red apple into the supply. This means there's now one of each. And now the next thing that we can do is move this tan uh, pioneer over to this shovel location. Now on this spot, we could potentially buy another card, or we could pick up another one of those cabins. Now that card would actually be our fifth card, which is worth five points, and the cabin would just be worth three. Now if we got a green cabin, then we would obviously make this much more efficient. And I think at this point, maybe we're not really going to make use of this bonus, but of course, that is covering up minus three points at the end of the game. I think taking another card is probably the right thing to do, but we do need to spend two resources. So looking at the plans up here that we might have, I think this Pioneer is going to go over there to go up the food track to get a mule so that we can do this third summit action. And in order to pay for all this stuff, that is going to cost a wood and two food, and this is going to cost two stone as well as a wood. So that means we have these three left over. But before we actually go forward with this action, I now realize we have one of each resource. And if we look up here to the wagon track, we need one of each resource and two boots to go up. Now we have two of these double boot tokens right here, and that would bring us from the 2x to the 3x scoring multiplier. Now if we look out here on the tracks, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, steps up here. That's a 3 and a 3 and a 1. So that's going to be 6 plus 1 is 7 plus 4 means we actually have 11 steps up here. So if we go from a 2x to a 3x, then that move will actually be worth 11 points to us, which is a lot more than the 5 points we would get for taking this card here. So I think maybe let's just stall out on this and just bypass this shovel and not pay for it. And now we have the option of spending this token for two boots and then all three of these basic resources. And that's going to match up right over here. And I think that's going to be more worth it to us. Now, after we do that, we do have our Pioneer over here, so we can send them onto this spot. We can spend the two food and this one wood, and then go up once on the red track. That's going to bring us right here, and that means we can now take the mule back from the blue player, and the blue player can take a food with an off-turn action if they want. And I think they have decided to go ahead and do that. Next up, we have this mule now, and we could come over here to turn some gold into other resources, but we don't really need to have resources on our off turn because we've trapped all of the animals. So I think instead, let's just go right over here. We can spend the two stone and the one wood, and we will go up once on the gray scoring track. And that's going to get us one gold as a bonus. All right, I think we are now done with our turn, so we can reset everything. We can then discard these cards, and we have just one card here. So it's now time to shuffle up our deck again, and then we can deal out two more cards. And now it's time for the blue player to go. Up next, it's now time for blue to plan out their turn, and they've decided to put their cards just like this. And then they're going to go right into their pioneering step. There's nothing for us to trap because we've trapped everything. Now they're going to send their tan path pioneer down here, and that's going to give them an extra food when they go along this food spot on the green path. 
So speaking of which, they are now going to start walking down the green path, and they're going to start with a boot. And with this, they're going to use their Frontiersman to come up here and contest this card with us. Next up, they will go here to get one food, and then they will get a bonus food for this cabin right down here. And then after that, they can go onto this spot, and that's going to steal the mule away from us. They can keep moving down this green path, they figure. They'll go here and get a stone, and that's going to leave them all the way to the end. And then they can take this Tanpath Pioneer and go onto this spot to get two wood. They can add those into their supply, and now it's time for them to do a shovel action. Now they figure they're going to give up this one food, and then with the shovel action, they're going to take this card right out from underneath us. Now that means both of us fall down to the bottom, but as a consolation prize, we are going to get one of these double boot tokens, which are again worth one point at the end of the game, so it's not great, but I guess it's nice to have that anyway. And then with these two cards left in their deck, they've decided they're actually just going to put this right onto their discard pile. They're interested in uh, cycling their discard pile to try and get some of these cards back into play specifically for their next turn. So at this point, they can now move on and they have a boot to play with. And with this, they're going to start heading up this much smaller mountainside. At this point, they've now decided they want to spend this double boot token. And that's going to give them two boots and then they're also going to get rid of one of each of the resources which is enough for them to bring their cart up to this 3x spot, and we are now just both one space away from the end of this wagon track. After this, they're going to move on to this spot, and they're going to spend their last two resources, and that allows them the ability to harvest these apples. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 red apples, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 green apples. Currently, there's one green and one red, so that means both of these are going to get maxed out at 6. At this point, their Tanpath Pioneer is all the way to the end, and they're going to send this one right up here, and that's going to give them the option of spending two green and two red to go up one of the apple tracks. And they figure they're just going to keep going up this red track, and that is going to give them two gold. Next up, they're going to send their Green Path Pioneer up here to the summit, and that's going to allow them to spend three red apples to go up once on the red track. And currently there are four red apples, so there's just one remaining, and they can now go up here, and that's going to give them the bonus of taking two more gold from the supply. When we come back here, they have a mule left, and they're going to send it down to this gray cabin. And once they go here, they're going to get rid of three of their gold, and they're going to take two wood, and they're going to take one food. Now that coincidentally matches up right over here, so they can now take their mule and send it up here. They can spend the two wood and the one food, and they can now go up once on that wood track. Now it is true that they spent three points worth of gold to make this happen, but they have gone up once on this track, and every bump on this track is worth at least three points to them, so that's a wash right there, and then as a bonus, they will get another double boot token, which could be useful to them on their next turn, or it could be worth one point at the end of the game. So at a bare minimum, I suppose they netted one point with that, and it's possible they will net another point if they get their uh, wagon over here finally to the 4x spot, and that would make that worth an extra point. So overall, they think that's all worth it. Now, when we come back over here, they're actually going to change something just slightly. They're going to say that while this mule was down here, they spent another one of their gold, and they picked up a food for that. Before they went up here, they easily had the gold available. They just really want to make sure they have a resource available to try and do a trap action on our next turn. So at this point, it looks like they are done with all of their actions, so they can start to reset all of these pioneers. They can also discard these cards here, and they now have two cards on the top of their deck, which means they can shuffle up their deck and then pull one more randomly from the top. All right, we can now take our turn. And before we actually start planning out our turn, I just realized that we got a little bit carried away with the blue player's turn, and I forgot to kind of give us the option of doing an off-turn action to follow up over here and get a wood. Now, we definitely would have done that because we don't really have anything to do with this green path pioneer, at least as far as cabins are concerned. So let's go ahead and say that we did that, which means we should have one more wood. Sorry about that. I just got so excited with all the combo -y things, I need to make sure to give ourselves moments to do these off-turn actions. Let's start planning, and when we look at the cards we have in our hand, we have, it looks like, an ability to turn three of any type of apple into gold. We've got the ability to go up the food track and the ability to go up that green apple track. Now, currently, we are just one space away from being at the top of that green apple track, so I do think we want to do that, but once we do that, we will then be essentially capped out. We can't go up with the green apples anymore. Now, if we look at the options that we have here, I think one thing that stands out is that we have just one shovel, and I do think that we want to do a shovel action this turn to try and get our fifth card. That fifth card is worth five points, which is pretty good. So this one's probably going to be here, although it could also be right over there. Let's just put it over here for the moment, though. And then when we look at these cards, well, at the moment, there are four green apples, so that would afford this one right here, and that would leave just one apple remaining. And then this one, if we put it in the middle, then that would generate, it looks like, four more apples. 
So that would be 4 plus 1 or 5. Actually, there's one red apple as well. So if we put this here, then that would be 6 apples available to do this twice to get a couple gold. So I think doing that middle action is probably going to be better than doing this middle action. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good setup, and I think it's pretty likely we won't actually be doing this harvest action, although potentially maybe we can in order to get some better activations out of this. Either way, I think this is the plan we're going to go with, and we'll see how that evaluates for us. And the next thing that we can do is we can take this uh, pioneer and let's send them down there, and that's going to give us an extra bonus for this single stone right here. Now before I get too far ahead of myself with these pioneer actions, technically the blue player can trap before we take any actions, but as you can see, we've only put one bunny out here, and they've already trapped a bunny. So even though they have a resource available to do a trapping, they uh, are not going to be able to do that. So we are once again kind of keeping them down, not allowing them the ability to get rid of some of these negative points. This has also been hampering the blue player's ability to get lots of resources from those fur trading actions, so I think that is definitely a good outcome of just leaving this bunny here. There was a deer as an availability, but I'm glad that we covered that up to not give them that option. Either way, we can now go back to taking some actions. And I figure let's start going down this green path at least until we hit the stone to get this bonus. So this first spot here is going to give us one boot. And with this, let's start heading up the mountain with our frontiersmen. The next thing we should do is come over here, and that's going to get us one stone, and then we'll get a bonus stone from this cabin down here that the Tanpath uh, Pioneer is manning. And at this point, let's go ahead and I figure we'll get some more apples, so that's mandatory. We'll take uh, two red and two green and add those to the supply board. This means green is maxed out, and there are three red available. And then let's keep going down this green path. We can just get this one wood and add that into our supply, and that's going to leave this Pioneer over here at the end. Now next up, let's have this one come on, and that's going to give us two food when we go right there. And then we can move on to this spot, and let's spend one of our resources, and I figure we'll get rid of a stone, and that will give us the ability to do a shovel. Now technically, before we even do the shovel action, we need to spend a double boot, because that's going to allow us to move our frontiersmen up twice, and then we can do that shovel action by moving the tan path pioneer over, so now we can use that shovel to pick up this card. Now when we do that, we're going to go back down to the bottom of the hill. We will now reveal the final orchard card. We can see it shows one red apple. So when you add all of these up, the full draw is going to be th uh, six red and six green, which obviously maxes out the board. And now that this has come out, we have hit the end game trigger. So what we're going to do now is we are going to play until we reach the person who was the starting player, and then we will do one more round. Since we are the starting player, that means the blue player is going to take a turn, and then both of us will take one more turn, and then the game will be over. At this point, there are a couple cards left over that need to get flipped over. This one right here turns green apples into wood, and this one turns red apples into wood. So we can now add this on top of our deck or into our discard pile, and I think we want to put it in our discard pile. It's pretty important for us to try and find that two gold into one wagon push action, and the more cards we draw from our main deck, the more likely we are to hit it. At the moment, there is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10 cards total, and one of those cards is the one that we really want to hit, so we have a little bit less than a 1 in 3 chance to do that, and I figure let's definitely not put another card on top to make those odds even worse. Alright, let's keep on moving with our Tan Pioneer, and this one is going to give us a boot, and let's use that to move our Frontiersmen up onto this card. Let's come back to our board, and I think we want a mule to do all three of these summit actions, and we can get that mule by going right over here with this Pioneer. Now once here we can spend our two food and one stone, and we will go up once on that red food track. And that's actually going to bump us up to the final spot on this track. Then we cross this lock, and that means that no other players can go onto this fifth spot, uh, specifically for the red path. But it looks like the blue player was not particularly close to actually making that happen. Either way, when we go here, the bonus is going to give us the mule, and now the blue player can do an off-turn action to try and track some food. And they have decided to do that with their Tan Path Pioneer, so they're going to forego any of these bonuses, and that is going to give them one food. And you can see now they could potentially use their Green Path Pioneer over here to effectively get another discount when it comes to gaining more resources. Either way, that's going to be their off-turn action. And then the next thing I think we should do is send our Mule over here. Now that's going to give us the ability to spend three green apples to go up once on the green track. And with this, we've actually pegged out on the green apple track, and we get another fur trade action as a bonus. This means we're going to get one of each basic resource, a gold, as well as another green and red apple. So there's now four of each in the supply. We can now move on, and we now need to decide, do we want to harvest apples? Now at the moment, there are eight total apples, and so when we do the summit action, we get to do this twice, and that would leave two apples left over, so we would get two gold, which is worth two points. 
Now, if we spend two of our resources, then we would uh, peg out all of the apples. And then when we did this, we would get four gold. So that's two more gold. And we would be leaving no apples left over for our opponent. I think that's probably worth it to essentially spend two resources to get two more points and to obviously uh, get rid of those apples. So let's get rid of these two wood right here. And then we will harvest apples. And as you can see, that's going to be up to six green apples and up to five red apples, but there's only space for two of each of these. So they will peg out on the market. And then we can spend our final action of the round to go up here. And now as many times as we want to, we can spend three apples of any color to get a gold. Just like we planned, there are now 12 apples out here, so we can spend all 12 of those. And when we divide 12 by three, that's going to give us four gold that we can add into our supply. Overall, I'd say that was a pretty good turn for us. We can now pass, so we can reset all of these here. We can then uh, discard these cards and then draw three more from the top of our deck. At this point, the blue player can now plan, and they've decided to put their cards out just like this. So they can slide those down, and the first action they are going to do is they're going to take their Green Path Pioneer and activate this cabin. That's going to give them a one discount on one of these two payments. And then they're going to start moving along this tan path. The first spot here is going to give them a fur trade action. And for them, that's just going to get them a food as well as a gold. And gold is worth one point at the end of the game, so they like that. And then the next thing that they're going to do is they're going to go right onto this bear spot, but they are not going to pay that penalty because of this cabin. So that's going to allow them the ability to just keep on moving. They can go right here, and that's going to get them two stone. And this pioneer is now essentially unlocked, and it's going to head up here and give them one boot. With this boot, they're going to head right over here. And then when we come back to their board, they're going to keep going down the green path. This spot is going to give them one gold, and then this spot is mandatory, and it generates three red apples. And it looks like these are the only apples currently on the market. They're now going to move on and activate their tan row. And when they go over here, they're going to spend two food to do this payment. And that's going to give them one shovel action, which allows them the ability to pick up their seventh card. Now they're going to go down to the bottom of the hill and they're going to add this one into their discard pile. And then, of course, we have to reveal the final two cards up here on the mountain. This one turns red apples into stone and this one lets you go up the red apple track. At this point, the Tan Pioneer is now at the end of their path, and they're going to move their Green Pioneer here to get a boot. And with this, they're going to move their Frontiersman up onto this card. Next up, they're going to keep walking down the Green Path, and this is going to give them one wood. And now both of their Pioneers have finished the path, and it's time for them to do some summit actions. Now the first action they are going to do is going to be over here. That's going to cost one of each of the three basic resources. And with this, they can go up one of the three main scoring tracks. And they really want to do three summit actions, so they're going to go up here on the food track, which is going to give them the mule that they can then use. And if we want to, we could do a tracking action to take one food as a bonus. At this point, I don't really see a reason not to, because once again, we've never actually built in a brown cabin, so this pioneer has nothing to do off turn, except go over here and pick up that one food for us with the tracking action. So we'll now come back over to Blue's area, and they are going to use their mule to go down to their gray cabin. Now once here, it looks like they're going to spend two of their gold, and that is going to turn into a stone and a wood, and that is what they need to activate this summit action. And they figure they'll just send their mule right up there to do that right now, and that means they'll go up once on the gray scoring track, which is going to give them a gold as a bonus. At this point, the last thing they want to do is a summit action, and they can spend red apples at a rate of one to one to get food. And there are currently three red apples up here, so they're going to liquidate the whole market, and that's going to get them three food. At this point, they are done with their actions, so they are going to reset everything. They can discard these cards right here, and now it's time for them to draw three more cards. And at this point, we have found ourselves coming back to the starting player, which means we are now going to each take one more turn, and then the game will be over, and we can score up our points. So let's start our final planning phase of the game, and unfortunately, we did not hit the card that we wanted. Uh, the one that lets you spend two gold to go up once on that wagon track is in here, and we had just less than a one-third chance of hitting, and it looks like that didn't go our way. Either way, looking at these cards here, we can see we have a beaver showing and a bear. Now, our opponent has already trapped a bear, but they have not trapped a beaver. Now, if we look at the bottom of the, these cards, then potentially if we just covered up this beaver, the problem there is that we now have an apple harvesting action here and a bear hazard, but we do not have the ability to draw another card. At this point, we have five cards drawn, so every new card is worth five points, which is quite a lot. That's more than even a track bump if we get all the way to the end on the wagon. So I think it probably actually makes sense to leave this shovel showing, even though it's going to give our opponent the ability to trap this beaver, which is going to essentially give them three points on us. 
Now in that case, I'm thinking maybe what we should do is the cards like this. That will give us the ability to gain the mule with this action right here. I guess on either of these cards there is gaining the mule. And then we have the fur action down there. And potentially, well, I guess if we have the mule, we'll probably want to do three actions up top. But we might not even have the um, uh, apples to do it. Either way, I think we're going to be getting the mule regardless. So let's go with this as our plan. We can slide these in just like this. And at this point, it looks like the blue player does indeed want to trap this beaver. They've decided to do this with their green path pioneer, and they're going to spend one of their food, and they can then flip this beaver over. And now it's time for us to take our pioneer actions, and I just realized that we are also showing one of the stones right here by leaving the beaver up. So I think this was the right call. We can send this pioneer down to that location and then start walking along the top here. So I guess this first spot right here has a boot, and we don't actually have anything good to do with it. When we come out to the mountain, we can see our Frontiersman is already on a card, and there's really no benefit to going over here and kicking out the blue player. We'd give them a point with one of these boot tokens, and then they could, of course, use that token to go up here, or just keep that point and go up here with one of their action cards. Also down here, it's going to cost us two boots to go right across here, and we have this two boot token, so I figure that's how we're going to do this later on in this turn, because we really want to make that happen, this being our final turn, and that would increase our multiplier from three to four on all of these tracks over here. Now, you are not allowed to save up your boots, so unfortunately, as soon as we leave the spot, we lose that boot, so we're just not going to use it, and then this location right here is going to get us one stone, and then of course we will get another stone as a bonus from this cabin. Now at this point, we can have this tan path pioneer start working, they're going to go right over here, and that's going to get us two wood, which we can then add over here into our supply. Now at this point, we have a lot of things we want to spend our resources on. We know that in order to go up the final spot for the wagon, we're going to need to spend this and two of each resource. So that would be all of these right here, which leaves just, I guess, one uh, wood and one stone remaining. Now the next thing that we hypothetically want to do is a shovel, but maybe instead let's go over here and that's going to take the mule. And we can use this mule to turn any of these golds into the right resources that we need. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that is going to be at the moment, so I figure let's do the really important thing first. Let's go ahead and spend these two boots and two of each of the basic resources, and that's going to move us to the final spot on this track. So we went from a 3x multiplier to a 4x multiplier, and if we look out to the tracks, we currently have 5, 10, 14, 15 track bumps. So we just went from 3 times 15 or 45 points to 4 times 15 or 60 points. So that was a 15-point move, and we really needed to make that happen. Next up, let's start moving this tan path pioneer, and we're going to go onto the shovel spot. We can spend, I think, this stone to pay for that, and then we can use the shovel to pick up our sixth card of the game. It doesn't actually matter where we put this because we're not going to be drawing and using any more cards, so we'll just put this into our discard pile, and at this point, we can now move on and do a fur trading action. Now, this is going to get us one of each of the base resources, and we are also going to get another gold, and a red and green apple will be harvested. So there's now one of each of those. Let's now move on, and this Green Path Pioneer is going to get us a boot. And I figure let's use that to go up here onto this card, and it's likely that the blue player will end up taking this card, which will get us one of these double boot tokens as a bonus, which is worth one point at the end of the game. Now it's possible the blue player may just move over here and then take this card instead on their turn, but at least we are forcing them to make that action if they want to. So let's come back over here, and our Green Path Pioneer is going to get us one gold, and we have a lot of gold at this point, just a huge horde of one point each tokens here. Now at this point, our Green Path Pioneer has reached the end, and I don't think we're going to move our Tan Path Pioneer anymore. The reason for that is because currently on the Apple Market, there's one red and one green, and this card up here requires two green and two red. Now, we obviously put our cards in such a way to not harvest apples, and I decided to do that because while we could have done this, we would have left so many apples left over for our opponent to capitalize on. So I figured, well, let's just not do this bump and do other things. Now, this means we're not going to do the summit action, which means we're only going to do uh, two of them, so we can leave this pioneer here and not use those resources. So now I figure let's go ahead and start by going right there. This is going to cost one food, that's going to be a stone as well as one wood, and we can now go up any of the three standard tracks. Obviously we are pegged out on this food track, so let's go up once here on this gray track and we've pegged that out as well. I think it's unlikely the blue player would have done two bumps up on this track, but I figure at least this way we have now forced them uh, to not even have the option of going up to there. Now that's going to get us one gold, and if the blue player wants, they can do a tracking action to take a stone. And they've decided they'd rather use this Pioneer for one of these cabin actions, so they're not going to do that. 
So let's now come back to our board, and we currently have one wood and the mule. So let's send the mule over here to this gray house. We can then spend two of our gold, and those can turn into the wood and the stone that we need in order to complete this summit action. And then we can send the mule right up there. We can spend these, and that's going to push us up once on the brown track, which is going to get us a double boot token worth one point at the end of the game. Now the blue player can do an off-turn action to follow and take a wood, but they've decided not to do this again. So we can add this token into our area, and at this point we have finished out our actions, and that's going to finish out our final turn of the game. We can go ahead and reset things anyway, and we can discard these cards, but there's really no reason to draw any more cards. And at this point, we can now go over to the blue player for their final turn of the game. So let's see how they've decided to plan out their final three cards, and it looked like they did pull the card that lets them spend their gold to get that advancement on the track. Of course, when you spend gold, you are losing points, but you also don't have to worry about the boots and all of the other resources. Now, at this point, they are done planning, and obviously we are not going to trap anything. We have been fully trapped for a while, so now they're going to start taking their Pioneer actions. The first thing they're going to do is just send this Pioneer down here to get a bonus of a food with this right here. Uh, they were thinking about maybe doing things a little bit differently to try and go right here and get a gold for this double boot, but this ended up being the plan that made the most sense for them. So at this point, they can continue to take some actions, and they figure they may as well start by heading down this green path. They're going to go onto this boot right here, and they are going to use that to head over to this card so that when they take this, we won't get a bonus. Next up along the green path, they're going to take a stone, and then they'll go here to take the mule. They can then go here, and that's going to get them one food and another food. And just like that, they've actually finished out the green path. As you can see, there's nothing over here on the right. And they figure they may as well start working down their tan path now. This first spot right here is going to get them two food, so they just have tons of food at the moment. And then when they go here, they can do a shovel action, and they're certainly going to use a food to pay for this. And they're going to use this to pick up their eighth card of the game. They're going to put this on top of their discard pile right over here, and then they get a boot action. And they're going to use that to go right up here. There's nothing to be gained by doing that, but they figure they may as well hang out with our Frontiersmen for the end of the game. So they can come back down here, and they are going to do a harvest action. They're going to get rid of two more of their copious food right here, and they'll now harvest the apples to the left and underneath their wagon. And it looks like that is going to be five red and six green apples, but there was already one of each, so these are going to peg out on the board. At this point, they've decided to start doing some of these summit actions. The first one will be right here, and that's going to cost three red apples to go up once on the red track. As you can see, they can easily afford that, and when they go up here, they will get two more gold from the supply. And interestingly enough, we both capped out the apple tracks just on different ones. They can add this gold right here, and the next thing they are going to do is activate this spot. Now that's going to cost them two food as well as one stone, and they can then go up once on that food track. And we can see that's going to bring them to the fourth spot, and they now get to take the mule, but they already had the mule. Now if we want to, we could do an off-turn action to take a food. And I figure, why not? We're not going to be doing any more actions with these pioneers. All right, we can come back here, and the last thing that the blue player wants to do is use their mule up here, and that's going to cost them two of their gold, and they now get to go forward once with their wagon. That's going to bring them to the fourth and final spot, so they have tied up with us right here, and at this point, that is going to finish out their turn, and the game is now officially over. They're going to discard these cards right here, and it's now time to start tallying up our final scores. The first thing we have to do is go through our entire deck and pull out all of the star cards because those are the cards that we added in. I've already kind of uh, separated these out. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And if we look down here, that's going to be worth 20 points. Next up, we can get our points for the scoring tracks, and that's going to be modified by our wagon. And we can see that our modifier is at the 4x spot. So that means every jump up on one of these tracks is worth 4 points. And if we look out here, we have 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. So that's going to be 17 times 4 for 68 points total from these tracks. And then we can take 1 point for every gold and double boot token we have. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 points here. And then the last thing we do is we lose points for any penalties showing. We never actually filled in this green cottage to make use of this uh, cabin tile here, unfortunately. But either way, that's going to lose us six points. And when we add all of that together, we have a final score of 96. Let's now come over and score the blue player. It looks like they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards that they picked out through the game. If we look down to our graph, that's going to be 30 points. Next up, they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points over here with their gold and double boot tokens. And the next thing they can score are their tracks. 
Just like us, they got to the four times multiplier, and on these tracks, they have five plus eight, and that's gonna bring them to 13, plus three is 16, so that's gonna be 16 times four for a total of 64 points from these tracks. The last thing they have to calculate are their penalties, and just like us, they have two of them, although both of theirs are on their animals, and both of ours was on our cabins. So that's gonna be minus six points to them, and when they add up all of their points, they have 95, and that means that we just barely win the game with 96 points. That's a single point difference between the two of us, so it was very close, even though we did slightly different things as we were playing the game, and that completes one full two-player game of Sierra West with the Apple Hill module. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. I love it when the scores are really close, and this one was super close. I mean, obviously, just one point was uh, the difference between us and the blue player, and it's kind of interesting considering we both focused on different things as we were playing. Obviously, we tried to go really hard on trapping our animals as soon as possible, and then we utilized that fur trade action as much as possible. But then over with the blue player, they really focused on getting those cabins early to try and have a variety of different options that they could activate, and they didn't really get over to the fur trade anywhere near as much as we did. Now, the blue player also got a lot more cards into the deck. Well, I guess a couple more cards, but still that ended up being 10 points. And when there's a difference of one point between the two of you, that's a pretty significant factor overall. And then in addition to all of that, there's just the gold uh, piles that we had at the end of the game. Like obviously gold is a nice flexible resource if you're able to get the mule, so you can turn that gold into the resources you need. But also having a big pile of gold at the end of the game is good because, well, they're all worth one point each. Now, obviously in this play, we were using the Apple Hill mode, and it's worth noting what is uh, part of that mode and what isn't. Now, in this play, realistically, it was all of the cards on the mountain were specific to Apple Hill mode, and then we had that Apple track board and then the Victory Point uh, track board where we could get extra gold and extra fur tracking actions. Now, if we had played this game with one of the other modules, then uh, those things would be swapped out and there'd be different stuff in there. Uh, for instance, there is a Gold Rush module where um, as you actually move your wagon along, you are essentially mining for gold and you roll a die to see how well you mine for gold on each uh, one of those cards. There's also mine cards that you can then put your gold into to get more points out of them, but you then only have the three scoring tracks. In fact, the Apple Hill mode is the only one with five of those scoring tracks. So if you're playing with the other modes, then pushing the uh, wagon cart over is still a good thing, but it's um, not quite as good because obviously that modifier will apply to less tracks overall, just three instead of five. Now there's another one called, I think, Boats and Banjos. And for that one, you have your wagon, but you also have a new token called called a boat. Now you're going to move that boat along the wagon path as well, and the boat will allow you the ability to harvest fish, and that's really all I know about that module. I haven't played that one just yet, but just the fact that you have um, uh, another wagon type thing is kind of interesting. And then there's also the Outlaws uh, and Outposts module, and in that one, you actually put Outlaws out on the mountain where you're actually picking up these cards, and I believe you have to fight them off and whatnot. There's like a sheriff and uh, various other things, but at this point, I've not gotten into the details of how to play any of those other modules at this point, um, I just kind of briefly glanced through the rulebook to see what was different for them. So obviously, uh, having to fight bandits out on the mountain to try and get cards would definitely change the overall gaming experience versus the Apple Hill module where it was just like, you know, just get stuff, like make apples, turn those apples into tracks, those tracks turn into points. So it wouldn't surprise me if the Apple Hill module is one of the higher scoring modules, but again, I don't actually have an experience set to talk about the other ones. Uh, so either way, I think at this point, that's going to wrap up all my thoughts on this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.